Well, hello everyone and welcome to Ruckus. We are starting a new series this week. It is the first week in our series looking at how we have security, hope, safety, protection in God. And we're going to look at stories that talk about how various people um, felt that protection and that security, even in the midst of some crazy situations. Uh, today we're going to look at a story of a man that that learned that God was trustworthy. He trusted God and God showed his trustworthiness. Today we're going to look at the story of Elijah facing off against the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. All right, before we do that, let's dive in and look at our core passage for this series. It's found in Psalm 57, and we'll read those verses right now. Be gracious to me, God. Be gracious to me, for I take refuge in you. I will seek refuge in the shadow of your wings until danger passes. I call to God Most High, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He reaches down from heaven and saves me, challenging the one who tramples me. For your faithful love is as high as the heavens. So the weather is never really that trustworthy, and it's very difficult to predict what the weather is going to be. And back in Bible times, the weather was so important. If they did not get the right amount of rain, then their crops would die. And a lot of them worshipped this false god named Baal, who was supposedly in control of the weather. And King Ahab was one of these people who worshipped Baal. And even though Elisha told him many times that there was only one true God, him and his wife Jezebel did not care and they continued to worship Baal. And in order to stop the worship of these gods, God caused a three-year-long drought, which meant no rain for three years. And Ahab blamed Elisha for the drought. And Ahab and Jezebel decided to kill all of God's prophet, and Elijah then had to hide from the king and queen. And one day, God asked Elijah to go and meet Ahab. When Ahab saw Elijah, Ahab said to him, Is that you, destroyer of Israel? He replied, I have not destroyed Israel, but you and your father's house have, because you have abandoned the Lord's commandments and followed the Baals. So King Ahab wanted to blame everything on Elijah, but Elijah said that it wasn't his fault and really it was King Ahab's fault because you see, he was not obeying God's commands. So then Elijah challenged Baal's prophets to a contest and he told King Ahab to get Baal's prophets to meet him on Mount Carmel. So now let's see what happened during this contest. <laughs> Welcome to the most spectacular event of the year. I'm Jared, and this is Canaan News Network. And I'm Javen. And we'll be bringing you all the action live as it occurs. Now, Javen, what do you think about this challenge brought by Elijah? Well, it certainly is an unusual challenge, considering there's only one of him and 450 prophets to Baal. I'll say he is sadly outnumbered. So you don't give him much of a chance then? Well, I don't know. Elijah certainly has done some pretty spectacular things by praying to his God, but I would say this time he has taken on more than he can handle. As you know, Elijah has challenged the prophets of Baal to prove whose God is more powerful, his God or Baal, and each God is being challenged to light a sacrifice on fire. We go now to Jerome with an exclusive interview. Thank you, Jared and Jabin. I'm here at the King's Palace with Queen Jezebel. She's a strong supporter of the prophets of Baal. Tell me, how do you think the prophets are going to fare against Elijah? Oh, my prophets will cream him. Your prophets? Oh, certainly. I am the one who keeps them in power. I thought that Baal kept them in power. Oh. Sure, but Baal needs a little help sometimes. I see. Now, what about this rumor that you only support the prophets of Baal because they keep you in power? <laughs> oh, is that old rumor still circulating? Oh, that is just ridiculous. 
Oh no, I am such a great supporter of the prophets that they speak very highly of me. That's it. Well, that's the word from the palace. Back to you, Jared and Jabin. Thank you, Jerome. We now go live to Mount Carmel. The tension is mounting. Since dawn, the prophets of Baal have been calling upon Baal to light the sacrifice, but there have been no results. What do you make of this, Jabin? Well, their style is certainly impressive. They've achieved a good balance between the shouting and dancing. I'm certain the prophets' efforts will get high approval from Baal. Any ideas why Baal has not answered them yet? The pace of their dancing may be just a little too slow to get his attention. What is Elijah doing in response? He appears to be shouting something. Sounds like he's making fun of the prophets of Baal. Well, he certainly doesn't seem very sportsmanlike to me. You forget, Jared, that Elijah claims his God is the one true God. This may be a farther ploy in his part to prove his point. Jabin, take a look. It seems the momentum of the prophets of Baal is building. Yes, they are adding elements of speed and drama to their dance, and the noise they are making is deafening. Certainly this will get Baal's attention. Ooh, Elijah is calling the people over to his area. And he seems to have rebuilt an altar of God. This is very symbolic. As you know, Elijah wants to rebuild the faith of the Israelites in their God. This is most amazing. Elijah is pouring water over his sacrifice. This action is hard to understand, Jared. If Elijah wants to prove his point, he should be trying to make the sacrifice faster to light, not harder. He keeps calling for more water to pour over that sacrifice. I can't imagine what Elijah thinks he is doing. It will be impossible to light that sacrifice now. Elijah just destroyed any possibility of proving the power of his God. Well, Jared, I don't think that prayer is going to get many points. There's none of the shouting or frantic dancing that we saw with the prophets of Baal. I really don't expect Elijah to succeed today. What was that? I can't believe my eyes. Fire just appeared on the altar and has burned the entire sacrifice and the water and the altar. But you said it would be impossible for that sacrifice to light. What do you make of all of this? I think we can only come to one conclusion. Elijah is right. There is only one true God. And Baal is a phony. And you heard it here on the Canaan News Network. Good night, everybody. So Elijah met with all 450 prophets, and Elijah told the prophets to prepare a bull and put it on wood, and he would do the same. He then said that the God who sets the wood on fire is the true God. At noon, Elijah mocked them. He said, shout loudly, for he is a God. Maybe he's thinking it over. Maybe he was wandering away, or maybe he's on the road. Perhaps he's sleeping and will wake up. So Elijah teased the prophets by saying Baal must have been sleeping or he must have been busy. And Elijah said this knowing that the true God is always near. So the prophets tried to get Baal to respond, but since he was a false god, he did not respond. And Elijah then prepared his sacrifice and did something very interesting. Next, Elijah arranged the wood, cut up the bowl, and placed it on the wood. He said... Fill four water pots with water and pour it on to the offering to be burned and on the wood. Then he said a second time, and they did it a second time. And then he said a third time, and they did it a third time. So the water ran all around the water and even filled the trench with water. So Elijah poured water over the sacrifice three times. He did this to prove how powerful the one true God is. And then Elijah prayed a very simple prayer. He said, please God, prove to these people that you are the one and only true God, that you are the only God they should trust and that they should follow only you. 
Then Yahweh's fire fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and it licked up all the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell face down and said, Yahweh, he is God. Yahweh, he is God. And then something incredible happened. Elijah's entire altar and all the water and sacrifice burned up. The people decided to follow God. They got rid of all the prophets of Baal. And then Elijah told Ahab to go home quickly because there is a rainstorm coming after a three year long drought. So in this contest, this showdown on Mount Carmel, God showed that he is the one true God. He showed that he is trustworthy and that he, he keeps his promises, and he wants everyone to know that his love, his power, his grace, his promises are all trustworthy. And Elijah trusted God, even in the face of 450 people who were against him and, and many, many more in addition to the prophets who were against him. He trusted God to show his power, to show who the one true God was, and God always keeps his promises. He is always true and trustworthy. You know, a lot of people rely on things like money or or good grades or the, the friends that they have and all these other things. And those things aren't necessarily bad in themselves. And But the truth is, is that None of those things are always going to keep their promises. None of those things are always going to come through for you. The only thing, the only person that is always, always, always trustworthy and always there walking alongside us no matter what we're going through is God. So as you go through your week this week, as you, as you spend time with God, remember that you serve a God, you follow a God who always, always, always keeps his promises. And the Bible is full of stories that show that God always keeps his promises. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We're going to come back next week as we continue our series on finding our security and our hope in God. One thing that I want to extend to you all is if any of you want to be a part of our, our Sunday broadcast, we want to extend that to you. And if you're interested in reading some scripture or being a part of it, send me an email, brad at calvary.ca, and we'll ask your parents too to make sure they're okay with it. And then, and then we'll find a way to get you involved during the fall. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.